Good morning, Melbourne. The first day of winter bringing grey skies and some morning fog at a top of 17 degrees. Layla? I think that's Phoenix Lipsomania there on Skycam. Now from Brisbane to Ipswich and Toowoomba, plenty of towns claim ownership of the Lamington Professor Morris French has actually written a book on the origins of our national cake and he joins us now live from Brisbane. Now be honest, Professor, this was just all, all an excuse to eat plenty of Lamingtons, wasn't it? Oh, no, it wasn't. I don't actually eat many lamingtons at all. <laughs> How it's, disappointing. Uh, it's given it, us a good excuse to eat them. Um, why did you write the book? Uh, well, there's been a long-standing competition between Brisbane, Ipswich and uh, Toowoomba over the claims to be the birthplace of the lamington. And uh, a local journalist on a Toowoomba paper asked me to investigate the substance that Toowoomba really was the birthplace uh, of the lam lamington. So uh, uh, it took me about 12 months uh, of interesting research to come up with uh, a sort of conclusion. Aha, uh -huh. so a sort of conclusion. What does the sort of conclusion come up with? Let me just throw my oar in at first because I thought it was the chef of the governor of Queensland um, who was kind of regenerating a stale cake. How's that theory go? Uh, that's one of the theories. Uh, Lord Lamington was Governor of Queensland from 1896 to 1901 and uh, it's generally argued that, he, that the cake was named after him or in his honour. There are three contenders really. Uh, the, the French chef Armand Galland at Old Government House, um, a, a cook uh, in Toowoomba's Harlexton House where the Governor spent his summers called uh, uh, a, a Fanny Young and uh, there's, uh, Ipswich has always made a claim, but they've never really been able to put forward any clear substance uh, or a person's name to it. There is, however, a, a third contender, I think, and that's the cooker instructor Amy Shower at the Brisbane Technical College, where Lady Lamington actually attended cooking classes and was quite well liked by the students there. Ah. I think they actually... I think they actually, na they actually named the cake in, in honour of Lady Lamington, not Lord Lamington. That's not to say that they necessarily were the first people to make the cake, though. And uh, how did Lord Lamington feel about the cake? Well, we don't really know. There, there is this uh, sort of mythical story that he referred to them as those bloody, puffy, woolly biscuits. Uh, but it, it's very hard to prove that they were his actual words. Um, that there is actually no documentation uh, at all about his reaction to uh, the Lamington. Indeed, the Lamington family seemed unaware of the cake named in their honour until long after they left Queensland. Uh, and um, feelings run high, don't they? People get passionate about the origins of the Lamington. Well, they certainly do in, in southeast Queensland. Uh, there's a rivalry between Ipswich and Toowoomba, uh, not only to be the birthplace of the Lamington, to, to, to make the biggest or largest Lamington, and perhaps there's even a claim, attempt now to erect a big Lamington statue in Toowoomba. <laughs> That's funny. I love it how Queenslanders are so competitive, even within themselves. It's just brilliant. Uh, we're looking at some pictures of Lamingtons, and I'm seeing all kinds of weird blow-ins. Now, is it correct to have cream or jam in the middle of your lamington or is yeah because Deb Knight is not very happy about it because traditionally there is no cream or jam involved is there well that's probably not quite true the uh, the purists say that there should be no cream or jam in the lamington but my research has shown that the second identified lamington recipe actually did have cream in it oh unbelievable but it, it seems to have then Sickness fallen out of favour for some time and come the jam and cream comes back in the, in the really the 1920s and 1930s depression. And, and Morris, what's the truth about it being a way to liven up a stale cake? Um, that too uh, is probably comes into in the 1920s really. The, one of the accounts is that they uh, a nervous maid dropped some stale cake into some chocolate mixture and uh, the chef retrieved it and sprinkled it with desiccated coconut. <laughs> but again, there's, there's no identification that my own research into the recipes suggests that uh, a person in the 1920s wrote to the papers and asked, what do I do with a stale cake? And the response from the cookery columnist was, make a lamington out of it. But that dates from the 1920s and, and 1930s. 
Uh, you're it's not from the 1901. You, you're a professor of history. Did you ever imagine that you would end up writing a book about the Lamington? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm really a more a political and economic uh, historian, and uh, I only got into this as a sort of a, a welcome diversion from getting bogged down in a rather heavy political biography I was writing. So this was a, 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 a nice uh, light relief for me. Yes, just as light as the beautiful Lamington. Now, you know, of course, that this was just a little test before you get involved in the great debate, the greatest debate of all, and that is the history of the Pavlova. Will we be seeing that book? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid it's already been done. There's a, an anthropologist that in Octago in New Zealand uh, who's already written, written, written a very good book on the pavlova. And uh, we can more or less say that pavlova is a New Zealand invention, but it was probably based on a recipe devised by an Australian cook resident in New Zealand at the time. Ah, well, on that the other hand, nice we can confidently well, maybe Anzac biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Well, for Anzac biscuits <laughs> is one is, <laughs> is a possibility. Okay. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> oh, wow, it really livened things up in the studio here talking about this. Morris, thank you very much. We're going to enjoy that book and we're going to enjoy our lamingtons. Okay, thank you. And we are going to try and talk to, have a guess, who? the fellow in Otago who wrote the book about the pavlova. Fantastic. So hopefully we can eat pavlova next week. Yeah. And, um, we're, gonna be <laughs> we're also going to be making lamingtons uh, with a very simple recipe. It's a good one, though. You might want to hang around for it. That's after nine this morning. Here's to Lady Lamington. And whoever yes. made the first one, we, yes. we're in, in their debt, aren't we? That's right. Yeah. We've got a quick hit of gossip coming up next. What's happening, Michelle? Well, Beyonce is furious with H&M. Don't miss this one. Feel like a thing you should